Hello Blazers, so it's your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi guys, doing today? Welcome to a brand new video and welcome to yet another Russian Q&A. Once again, I went on my Instagram and asked you guys to ask me any sort of personal questions or questions about Russia and I'm gonna be responding to the most relevant to the most interesting ones in this video. If you wanna have your question in the next episode, then make sure to follow my Instagram and be on the lookout for the next time I do this. Let's start out with a pretty funny one, which I would like to add to my list of uh, the weirdest stereotypes that Westerners have about Russia that think this country is literally like uh, just a barren field with nothing or something. Can Russians own personal property? For example, land, own house, own business. I you don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. What kind of opinions do people have about Russia where they think that Russians cannot own lands, own houses, or own a business? I understand, yes, owning businesses. That was like only introduced in the late 80s or whatever. Before that, in the Soviet Union, not everybody could open a business or whatever, right? But this is not the Soviet Union anymore, okay? And you could own land and own a house for pretty much the entirety of Russian history. Like, why are you asking me this? <laughs> I, I love it. I absolutely love it. What American-style food is the hardest to find where you live that you crave the most often? Or have a great answer to this. Actually, the American style foods, um, I mean, this is not really American food per se, but it's very popular in America and it's everywhere in America and in Russia, not very much so. I'd say in Chelyabinsk especially, the food that is very hard to find, and even if it does exist, it's nothing like it, what it should be, is tacos, okay? Just Mexican food in general. Russia barely has any decent Mexican foods. We've got it all, right? We've got Italian, we've got Chinese, we've got Japanese, we've got burgers, you know, classic American stuff. Of whatever European country, right? But for some reason, the shortage of Mexican restaurants in Russia is insane. Especially in rural Russia. I've recently been to Moscow, I went to a Mexican place there, it was pretty good, but however, it would not really compare to when I went to Berlin, Germany, and I went to this Mexican place and I tried tacos, and oh my god, it blew my cock off, okay? It blew my fucking cock off. That's how good it was. And I've never had a taco that good since uh, when I was in Germany, at a place where actual Mexicans work. I guess Russia just has no Mexicans. I don't know why, Mexicans just never come to Russia, so uh, no Taco Bell either. Russia does not have Taco Bell, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's pain. The day Taco Bell arrives to Russia is the day when I can die a happy man. Now, before we continue to the topic mentioned in the title of the video, let me interrupt this program with a message from our sponsor, Surfshark VPN. In our current tumultuous times, things such as free and open access to the internet and even access to free speech on the internet are very much at risk. It doesn't really matter if you live in Russia or not, things just get banned left and right nowadays, and the best way to ensure your internet security and your internet freedom is get your a VPN. In my honest opinion, as a user, Surfshark VPN is probably one of the best VPNs you can get today, and as a VPN service, Surfshark makes sure that your internet access is secure and safe, and also allows you to visit some websites that you otherwise might not be able to visit. For me, one of the greatest features of Surfshark is actually being able to use it on an unlimited amount of devices, so pretty much any device you have, you can use it on without any restrictions. Another cool feature is Camouflage Mode, which basically makes you completely untraceable and for your internet provider to not be able to tell if you're using a VPN at all. And you can do simpler things with Surfshark as well, for example, go on the Netflix and change in your location to the US or Canada to be able to see movies and TV shows that might not be available in your region. So, if you're in the market for a great VPN, then go over to surfshark.deal slash nfkrz and use my code nfkrz at the checkout to get 83% off of a two-year plan and also three extra months for free. Using Surfshark VPN is basically a great way to make your internet browsing experience way more safe and secure. And if you get it, you support your boy, so that's pretty good as well. So once again, if you do not have a VPN yet and you're looking for a good one, then go over to surfshark.deal slash nfkrz, use my code nfkrz at checkout and get yourself a sick VPN. Thanks to Surfshark once again for sponsoring this video, and let's get back into it. Alright, now let's get to the question that is actually in the title of this video. I got this question right here, and actually a lot of questions like this. What is the main perspective in Russia to not being allowed to compete in the Olympics as the Russian team, essentially? Basically, if you guys don't really follow sports, and if you live under a rock, Russia is banned from the Olympics, and the Russian team, per se, as the team of Russia, the country, is not 
present at the Olympics currently happening in Tokyo. Yes, that is correct. If you've been paying attention to the Olympics, you've noticed that Russia is not a thing at the Olympics. It's just not there. Instead of Russia, there's the organization that's called ROC. No, that does not stand for Republic of China, although I feel like it is pretty confusing. It stands for the Russian Olympic Committee. And the reason why this all happens is basically because in 2019, there was a huge anti-doping scandal related to Russia. And the World Anti-Doping Agency actually banned Russia for four years from competing in the Olympics and other uh, sports championships, worldwide sports championships. Then that amount of time was actually shortened because Russia appealed it and now it's only until 2022. Which means that during the World Cup in 2022 in Qatar, Russia still will not be able to participate under like the, the name Russia. In the recent Euro 2020 though, for example, Russia could participate under the name Russia because um, apparently this does not work with Euro championships. And as a way to work around this, the Russian Olympic Committee was created in which um, athletes that could prove they didn't use any doping uh, were basically added into and they're actually now representing Russia in a way. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous to be honest because they cannot even uh, represent their country, they cannot go out under their own flag, they cannot even use the anthem. So for example, if anybody from the Russian Olympic Committee wins, they actually play um, a symphony by Tchaikovsky. They don't play the Russian anthem. But as far as like the perception of this in the Russian society, I would say it's basically split up into two parts. If you take for example the side of like the official Russian media, the state media and stuff like that, they're basically pushing the narrative that you know, oh this is all done by the West, the South there to destroy us, they, they're spreading their lies and they're not letting Russia compete fairly and uh, you know, you know what I mean, right? Essentially, if there's an opportunity to demonize any Western nation or any Western organization, the Russian propaganda is going to do it. And on the other side, from the people who, you know, uh, don't really like the current government and stuff like that, or you know, these political YouTube channels or whatever, you hear a lot of takes uh, along the lines of like, oh, look at what this regime has done to this country. At this point, the, we cannot even compete in sports properly. It's a complete shame. They've ruined everything. They've ruined even our, our sports. Essentially, they're blaming me like, putting himself for this doping scandal. I mean, I feel like it's pretty much an over-exaggeration and an overreaction on both sides. You know, and it's just a messy situation overall. So I hope that the athletes competing, um, you know, their spirits are not too down by not being able to represent their country properly. I hope the ban gets lifted eventually, and I hope there will be no doping scandals like this in the future, because I want my country to be represented at the Olympics, you know? What's the best Russian beer? Does Russia have a big culture of craft beer or ale? Yes, definitely. I actually never really talked about this, but yes, Russia Russia has a huge culture of craft beer. Craft beer is such a fad right now in Russia. Everybody goes out to craft beer bars. Everybody drinks craft beer, IPAs, stouts, sour ales, everything, dude. And Russia actually has a lot of great breweries that make this beer. And the shit that they make is actually incredible. Actually, the Chelyabinsk Oblast, you know, the region where I live, has a brewery as well that's, that's pretty good called Astrovitsa. And craft beer from this brewery can be found all throughout Russia. So, yeah, Russia has some good shit. Please say something about your PC software, because it looks like you bought it when USSR was alive. <laughs> Look, you're not wrong though. He's not even wrong, because I actually use Windows 7. Yes. Uh, the thing is that, like, my PC that I use right now is back from 2014. Like, I bought it in 2014. It's seven years old at this point. Kind of sad. I need an upgrade. I will be upgrading really, really soon. But the reason my PC looks so bad is because I'm actually using a Windows 95 theme. So it looks, like, super ancient. I feel like it brings me some sham, though. You know, it shows that I don't care and that my life is garbage and all my tech is ass. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's something to be proud of. It's definitely not. But, uh, I will be proud of it regardless. Have you ever got hate in real life? because of your channel? Um, that is a pretty good question. The truth is that, uh, no, not really. Every single time I've ever been recognized in real life, it was good vibes. People always, you know, would come up to me, take a photo with me, compliment me, whatever, and it's happened, you know, I couldn't even recall it. It's happened, like, at least, like, a hundred times at this point in my life. But there was this one time when somebody said something slightly negative, although I'm not even sure if he really meant it. Uh, there's this guy who came up to me and he said, uh, thank you for making that video on, uh, Brat, you know, the, the movie review, but your tweets a cringe <laughs> and he just left that was kind of funny and that's like the one interaction i really remember of you know the dozens of the rest so uh if you see me in real life make sure to say some dumb shit and i will remember you for the rest of my life and i will see you in my night best how easy is it to live in russia if you're a former smoker who's trying to stay quit spicy uh my man i'm just gonna say prepare to ruin your 
shit. <laughs> I mean, it depends on who you talk to, to be honest, right? But I'm just saying this, like, right now in Russia, and I think this is the situation around the world in general as well, because of vapes and everything, literally everybody I know, including me, myself, and I, we are all fucking addicted to nicotine. Straight up, dude. We smoke uh, these disposable vape pens, proper vape machines, or whatever the fuck they're called. People smoke cigarettes, electronic cigarettes, everything, dude. If you're ever gonna go out to clubs, bars, if you're gonna go to house parties, you will be offered cigarettes. And if you're an ex-smoker, especially if you're a little bit drunk, you know damn well you're gonna get that cigarette and you're gonna fucking puff on it like it's your last. So, uh, everybody's just smoking, dude. Everybody's vaping, in my generation at least, young people. So, uh, I cannot even imagine how much of willpower you need to have to be a non-smoker in today's uh, modern Russia, to be honest. I'm gonna... <laughs> it's just the truth. Russian grocery stores, best and worst. This is a good question. I would not really rank all of them uh, on, a, on a tier list, although I think that's a good video idea, to be honest. I would say that honestly the worst grocery store pretty much in any city usually is Dixie. You know it's like this uh, store that kind of like has like a v bodega vibe to it. At least in bigger cities like Moscow and St. Petersburg a lot of the times like it's located, it, it could be located in a sick ass neighborhood right? So expensive ass restaurants and everything. It will be on like an expensive street you walk into the store and it's fucking garbage. Like the inside of these stores Dixie are usually trash as hell. Like I cannot even describe it. They're fucking nasty dude. Even in Chilabinsk, they kind of have a different vibe, even though it's the same store, you know, grocery store chain, but they still fucking suck and they're dirty as hell. I don't know what it is, dude. Now, the best grocery store, I mean, I don't know. I would say for the common person, Lenta or Perikryostak, but probably like the cream of the crop are these like elite stores we have, uh, which are not even like in Chilabinsk, they're only in St. Petersburg and Moscow. There's this store called Azbuka Vkusa, which is like basically it's like Whole Foods kind of vibes. It's always like drip as hell inside, you know. It's basically like a grocery store for class enemies, you know, and also of course kind of like a Whole Foods vibe as well, except that they sell a lot of ready-to-eat foods. So yeah, I would say Fkus Vil and Azbuk of course are probably the best, but also the most expensive and I go there like maybe once every five years <laughs> because I don't live in Moscow, St. Petersburg, and even if I go there, I don't fucking go to Azbuk of Kuso or of Kusvil. Too damn expensive. Too bougie for me. Do I need to learn Russian to get around in St. Petersburg and Moscow? I would say no, not really. Um, St. Petersburg and Moscow, first of all, the city is super touristic, so if you want to just uh, arrive and come to be a tourist and just visit, no, you absolutely don't need English. You will have English um, everywhere in the metro. A lot of signs are going to be in English. If you walk into like a restaurant or a cafe or whatever and you try to ask uh, something in English, I'm pretty sure the waiters would have to uh, talk talk to you in English and bring you like an English menu. I've actually never tried it to be honest, but I assume that, you know, St. Petersburg and Moscow are pretty much not very different to your average touristic European city like Prague, for example, so I would assume that Restaurants should have an English menu as well. Assuming you're in the center of the city, of course, in a more touristic location. If you want to go to like a random place where only locals go and you will try to speak English there and ask for an English menu, they're gonna kick your ass. <laughs> so I guess the answer is basically the same as uh, with any travel. Uh, you know, if you want to just travel and be in a city for a week or two weeks, whatever, you don't really need Russian. But if you actually plan to study, stay, uh, live in Russia, of course, you need to work on your Russian because you will need it. Can you yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Those are all the questions that I picked out for this video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, then please make sure to slap the like on it as well, guys. If you want to support me additionally, make sure to go to the link in the description to my Patreon, donate to it. I would gladly appreciate it. It would help me out a lot. Thank you guys once again for watching this video. Hopefully it was entertaining and you learned something new. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.